Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this particular video, I'm gonna be taking a look at whether or not the actual mechanical power of a propeller increases as you change the direction of that prop. Also taking a look at the efficiency of a propeller turning the correct direction as well as the incorrect direction. Now you might be wondering why the heck are we doing this? Well, I have come across a couple questions that you guys have been asking if it's okay to take a regular conventional propeller and just rotate it in the opposite direction because you can't find that prop to work for you as a pusher prop in your configuration. In a in addition to this, I have seen it at the flying field where propellers are turning in the incorrect direction and the plane seems to still fly. This is why we're diving into the actual data and I'm going to have all the numbers for you including the actual motor efficiency as well as the propeller efficacy that we're trying to get. The way we're going to do this is very simple. We are going to take this motor right here, we're going to bolt it up in the dyno that we have and then we're going to go and operate it in the correct propeller direction. Action. Then once we're done with that, we're gonna take two of the wires that are connected to the speed control and we're gonna flip them. Anytime you change two of the three wires on a sensorless motor, you are going to change the direction. And we have a video that talks specifically about that. It's that simple to change the direction of our motor, which in turn is the propeller, without needing to go and reprogram our speed control to any degree. That's essentially the procedure that we are going to use for this test. Now let's bolt this motor onto the dyno and fire it up. All right, we're gonna fire up the motor and we're gonna slowly increment our way to 100% throttle. Once we're at 100% throttle, then we're gonna go and take five samples. You see me click on the take sample button here shortly. So we're just about hitting full throttle and you can see that we're about 87, 8800 RPM. This is the max on a three cell lithium polymer battery pack. We got 130 watts of power being drawn. We're taking our five samples right now at just random periods of time and we're gonna use those samples to compare data from having the prop in the correct direction to changing the direction of the propeller. So now that we have that, we slowly ramp our speed down and we're going to swap the leads here on the motor. We just simply unplug two of those leads. We're gonna swap it by placing the second lead onto the first motor lead. We take that first ESC lead, swap it to the second motor lead, and we're ramping up throttle now in order to compare the incorrect direction so already you can tell that there's a sound difference. Something sounds very different about what's happening right now. We get negative values in torque and thrust to show us that we're actually operating in the incorrect direction. This is why it shows up as that minus sign. And electrical power, it looks like it bumped up to about 142 watts. And I can't remember about where the torque was or where the thrust. So we're going to take a look at that right after we go and slow this motor back down. Here is our data set. This is a quick summarization of all the values that we've measured. We got quite a few actually to talk about. So let's start right at our voltage and current. Then we're gonna jump into torque and thrust and work our way through the wattage, RPM, and efficiency and efficacies. The voltage that we put into our system was at 12.3 when we operated the motor in the correct direction. Then this dropped by 1% for the incorrect direction, giving us 12.16 volts. Not a big deal, dropping 1%. This can be reflected in our motor RPM where we were operating at 8,800 RPM and we dropped to 8,700 RPM just because of this voltage drop. And we see that the difference here is about 1%. Not a big deal. When it comes to current though, it is a bigger deal. We have 10.5 amps of current being drawn when we operate in the correct direction for our propeller. However, in the incorrect direction, we are bumping this up by 11% to 11.69 amps. So that is a somewhat big deal. Now let's move over to the first two values. This is the actual values that mean somewhat of an importance for us here today. The thrust value, of course, being that significant one. We're getting in the correct direction a thrust output from our system of 0.505 kgs. That's essentially half a kilogram of thrust when we operate that propeller in the correct direction. And we go and operate that prop in the incorrect direction, we're actually getting negative because it's in the 
incorrect direction, 0.345 kgs. This is a drop of 32%. Then when we look at the torque values for our system here, we have just under 0.1 Newton meters of torque operating that prop in the correct direction. And then in the incorrect direction, we jump up by 19% to 0.117 Newton meters. So this is a very interesting value when we look at how the thrust actually drops, but the actual torque that we need to spin the propeller in the incorrect direction goes up. Now let's talk about the electrical power and mechanical power. In terms of electrical power, we were sitting at just under 130 watts. However, incorrect direction, we bump up by about 12 watts to 142.2 watts. This is a jump in electrical power by 10%. This is something that is significant. When we look at the mechanical power that we actually get out of our system, this is going to be essentially like when you look at the horsepower values for full size cars. This is that value that we're talking about. 106.8 watts of mechanical power in the incorrect direction versus 90.9 .9 watts operating in the correct direction. That's a difference of 17% where we're actually needing 106.8 watts, 17% more by operating in the incorrect direction. A very unique number. When we talk about how efficient our motor is, this is the relation of electrical versus mechanical power. When you take one value and you divide it by the other, you get a ratio otherwise known as a percentage. This is important versus when we actually talk about the propeller efficacy, not propeller efficiency. Here we have 70.4 for operating that motor in the correct direction. And uniquely enough, we get a bump in motor efficiency. The actual motor efficiency goes from 70.4 to 75%. This is a percentage difference of 7%. Now we talk about the propeller mechanical efficacy. As I mentioned before, this is not efficiency where we're dividing one unit by the exact same unit where the unit cancels out and we get a percentage. This is going to be a value of gram force for every watt that we put in or get out of the system. Mechanical efficacy refers to the actual mechanical power that we get out of our system. And this goes from 5.55 gram force per watt to 3.23 grams per watt. This is a drop of 42% and a significant amount. Our propeller is not doing so well in terms of what we actually want. We want thrust and we're not getting the thrust that we need. Where does this 42% drop come from? Well, it comes from the actual thrust dropping by 32% and the mechanical power actually going 17% higher. We're getting more mechanical power out of this system. However, we're dropping in the actual parameter that we want, which is thrust by 32%. And then when we go and look at the overall prop efficacy, this is now referring to our electrical power that we actually put into the system. And because our electrical power actually gets a little bit more efficient, the motor's a little bit happier operating at the higher current than the lower current for our case case here, we get the overall prop efficacy of 3.91 gram force per watt here for our correct direction and 2.43 gram force per watt in the incorrect direction. This is a drop of 38%, not as bad as our mechanical efficacy. However, at the end of the day, we are looking for how much power we put into the system and are we gaining anything here? And the answer is no. So this is now where we ask ourselves, is it really necessary or is it beneficial for us to take a propeller, let's say a tractor style propeller that's made to pull the plane along and we want to use this to operate as a pusher prop style where it pushes the plane along. If we want to use this propeller and operate in the incorrect direction, we're looking at an actual overall efficacy. We're losing about 38% of the gram force of our thrust value at the same wattage value. That's quite a drop and it really does make you question whether it's a good idea to do this because you're gonna have to put in a lot more watts in order to get the same sort of thrust values 
in our system today. Now, one of the things that I am missing that I would like to actually get, and it could be calculated because we have all the right values to do so, is the speed of the actual airflow coming off that propeller. Because the thrust is dropping, we know that the actual pitch speed of this propeller is lower. We're not getting the same amount of airflow over that prop, and that can be troublesome as well, where if we expect that the plane needs to fly at a certain speed, the propeller may not actually be able to get that plane up to that speed and maintain it there. That is important. Both the pitch speed as well as the thrust go hand in hand. And that's another thing that you have to keep in mind here. If anything, you may think twice about operating that propeller in its incorrect direction. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.